What's this? Well, this is a compact TriStar, and this is how it came to me originally. It was just left on my bench in pieces, and I, uh, by a customer who I wish I knew their name, but it was in Albuquerque, and they just kind of left it for me knowing I was a collector, and it was just really a nice gift. Uh, they even gave me this styrofoam box with the accessories, uh, which I'll explain all of this in a minute. I just thought I would show it the way that it was left to me originally. Now the one thing that is different about this is the HEPA filter, or lack of HEPA filter. It's a exhaust filter. These are not sealed from the factory very well. So one thing that was done to this, because it was my daily driver for a little while, is there's actually a small silicone bead I placed in here. And silicone will come off without hurting the paint. But the purpose of that was to seal that properly. I also put a little bit of silicone around the switch. So this is actually, and around the cord, so this is actually a sealed TriStar. Just to make it uh, appropriate for day-to-day -day use. So I thought I'd just show what I have. So this is not the manual for this, but it's a 1980s manual, but not really a lot changed. When we look here, we can see the same sort of accessories. Her fashion's a little updated, and then they show the old cyclonic chart. Because if you didn't know, this is a cyclonic vacuum. Let's show that for all of those people who want to see the accessories. And what's there? And so what I have here is the unit with its flower power, lovely flower power markings. And these were available in this yellow color and there's actually like a blue. I don't like the blue as much. Um, and we can see the compact logo. And you can also see ICE on there showing that that is who made this. This one has an original cord even. Not bad for the 1970s. I also have the original compact power brush. And this, they've always called their electric brushes turbo brushes. And that's always bothered me because they're not air driven. But I'm going to show you what I got. And what's kind of special about this. So first we're going to remove my wands, which have this nice... They, now these have not been removed in over 10 years. I can guarantee you that. Ooh, those might be stuck on there. So we're gonna, we'll free those up a little later with a heat gun. Uh, set those aside for a minute. But this is the thing I want to show you. And for some reason between Eureka and TriStar, the button placement's slightly different. So there's, there's a stub tube adapter on these. And if you didn't know, this is a Eureka Powerhead. Um, that they marketed to TriStar. And you can see it's still a little dirty from, well, my use. You can see there's a Vibrant Groom. I think he called it Vibrant Groom 3, but it was really a Vibrant Groom 2. Um, and you can see the dirt from when I used to daily this. The other thing that was replaced is, of course, this hose. Always has to be replaced. Sold hoses with dry rot. And then it came to me with this aftermarket hose, unfortunately. And there's nothing wrong with the aftermarket hose, but it's just not as original. Um, but it does seem to be the original, or at least older era pigtails. So, that's what's there. Now, I'm just going to show the accessories. This is one of the Bear 4 tools, and I replaced the horsehair bristles, or their natural bristles. But that is the area rug tool. You know, I've never tried this with my central vac. It'd be very interesting to see how that does. Uh, so that snaps in and out of there. I'll show you what that is. Now I got the original, you can see the styrofoams on there, the original upholstery tool. And this is one of my favorite upholstery tools. And a great dusting brush. And this is almost identical minus color to the Kirby dusting brush. Again, one of my favorite styles of dusting brushes. 
They also have the little silver guy. It's missing the logo, but you know, at the age of this, I can't complain. And then I actually ordered at the time a replacement crevice tool. And you can see the stuff I've used the crevice tool. So again, I daily this for a while. So those who few who follow my channel know that I'll daily any vacuum pretty much. But just to show you that even before the YouTube and all that, I really like vintage vacuums. I try to do newer stuff, but occasionally you're just gonna have to bear with me and we're gonna go through memory lane and vintage. So let's go over what's inside the bag and all the maintenance that needs to be done on this on a regular basis. So I'm gonna go over regular maintenance with uh, the Compact TriStar. And this applies to a very wide range of Compact TriStars. Uh, ranging up until about 1998, 2000, this is how they were made. Uh, so I will tag this in the video, of course, accordingly. So we're gonna start by taking the paper bag out. And you can see it's not ripped, but the paper bag the micro linings ripped on this, so we're going to go ahead and throw that away. This has the original outer cloth bag that you want to rinse out, launder. Um, actually replacing this, you can get a little bit more airflow. And this, of course, has probably got in here. Yep. We have, this is just a replacement Amtec filter. Uh, this is, they say, change every six months. That's on there, right there. The camera will focus. Um, and I, you know, it depends, six months to a year, depending on your usage. And using these EnviroCare, now they make a single layer, but this is the double layer EnviroCare bag. I actually have found this to work much better than the original bags. One of the few vacuums that the replacement bags are better than the originals. So, there's those filters, and then What's cool is you can just reach down and touch the motor. In fact, I can shake the motor bearings, make sure everything's good, which it is. And then this is that aftermarket filter. So what is in here? And I'll explain to you each component. Now I had mentioned previously that I had just put a small silicone bead in there. Um, so we're not gonna actually unscrew this, but you actually can unscrew this and change it as a whole assembly. They used to have the individual pieces available. I haven't seen them available for a very long time. So this here is really just to catch motor carbons. This is going to be your allergy filter. And then out here we have two things of active carbon. So just to zoom out, I'll show you just all the different filters uh, involved in this. Again, this has actually changed as a whole assembly, so we're going to go ahead and do that, set that aside. Let set the paper bag aside for a minute. This will change as a whole assembly. This you can change or launder, it's up to you. Um, if the ring doesn't come out, you have to hand wash it, and this is a permanently attached ring, so this is the original cloth bag, kind of cool. So, as far as what we're going to do in here in terms of cleaning, you can actually break this down and wash it. That's already been done once to this cleaner. Normally I would break down and I'd even consider dishwashing it with an enzyme, not an acoustic. We're not gonna place this one in the dishwasher like I said, it's been done. Really the only thing I wanna clean right here is gonna be this and I'm just gonna dust the inside of the cleaner. Real quick, even the outside before we wipe it down. I'm, uh, in this case, I'm, having, I'm using my central vac and dust, its own dusting brush. Now I'm going to just with a screwdriver, and this this will already have been damaged, unfortunately, usually with the paint. And yeah, you can see it's silver under there, and you don't see any orange stuff coming off. Uh, but basically, what happens there is this dirt builds up from basically the impact of uh, what's there already. So again, the, the paint is actually on there. And it actually doesn't scratch off easily. So we're just gonna... 
then we'll clean the rest of that up with a scrubby. Well, let's get to the turbo nozzle, which is really an electric powerhead service. Now, something that wears out commonly on these is this guy, and we can see the wear right there already. I guess that was stuck in it. Um, anyways, so you can see the wear uh, in that, and that just goes uh, like so. Um, so that can wear the body and this piece, but this piece, last I checked, was still available. So let's take this apart and see what we find in there. Yep, of course I don't, haven't put my screwdriver back. Uh, again, my trusty Hitachi. On some of the later models, these are much longer screws, but on this model, those are shorter screws. I'm going to pull this off. And this definitely needs to be cleaned out. So we're going to set that aside and we're going to clean that separately. So, see I've got a broken belt there. And that just, it didn't, there's no burn that didn't snap from where that snapped from it just sitting there. And you're going to notice that the bearings on these brush rollers allow a lot of side play. That's perfectly normal. I'm just going to pull this out. And you can see it's a sleeve bearing, so that's a lubrication point. And then this side, actually disassemble this if you need to, but you can get to the bearing in there just fine without disassembly. Um, so next is kind of the cool beans of it all. And uh, first we can see the motor was replaced in 04 on this. The other one has, a, the other part of the vacuum has an original motor, but this was replaced. As you know, power heads get uh, worn. This has a sleeve bearing on one side, ball bearings on the other. So on this side, a drop oil will be required. And then this thing that's a shag, low pile, high pile, it's actually just an air relief valve. It's not actually a height adjustment. Height adjustment's kind of automatically done by this. Um, a little drop of oil on these bushings is nice as well. Um, but no grease is required anywhere in here. So we're going to go ahead and clean this out uh, real good and see what, what we can find in there as well. Again, we're going to use its own tools. So that didn't really feel like it did much. I want to make sure there's nothing else caught in there. I'm checking so I can see. Uh, I'm not sure you can see it on camera, but I can see my finger. And yeah, you can see daylight through there. Um, so that's good. Don't know why there are shell casings in there. All kind of things you have on your floor when you haven't looked at the machine in a while. So this has all been siliconed in place nicely, so you'd actually undo these screws to pull this out. Again, I'm not sure that's going to be necessary, uh, but we can show you what that looks like. Why not? Then this just kind of... I don't actually pull those out all the way. Just move them to the side. Now you can see the whole assembly there. So that, I actually want to wash all this. I think we're going to end up doing this more parts than I expected. We're going to wash a whole bunch of crap. Particularly those could use a good rinsing. Uh, the base of this is just absolutely filthy. i wash that. Um, if you don't need that suction bleed out, um, sometimes putting a piece of tape here, uh, electrical tape, uh, so it's not losing as much suction can be important. I, of course, have this nice plush carpet, so that, of course, isn't going to work. So we're going to go ahead and blow out this out uh, with compressed air. And I might hand wash this upstairs. I'm not sure exactly on this. I'm trying to re also remember why I'm shooting this. Some of these are held in by two screws going there, plus the four screws. Yeah, 
this is this is held in by the two screws on the other side. That's why the label is peeled back here. So that means you're gonna have to be real careful when we wash this. We might actually just scrub this with a tooth with a toothbrush by hand. In my super secret layer here, right by the exhaust fan. I'm always telling you there's an exhaust fan and I never have shown it in a video. But there is an exhaust fan. So we're going to be blowing out components real quick here, just to show you. What that's like. Now I brought the brush roller. This is a part that I always like to blow out, just because it's a good, good way to get that. end cap nice and clean so you see me doing that. I'm trying to do this in frame and it's it's really hard doing it in frame here. So we're gonna put this Now we're going to blow out this while it's running. So that is how we blow out uh, vacuum cleaners here. And you'll have to excuse the junk again. Well, we're here in the grinding room. We're gonna take care of some of the facets and things. I've already done a lot of them, but I've washed this plate. We're gonna take care of some of these uh, on the slow moving grinder and then we'll hit it with the buffer wheel. Try and get you in there as best as possible.
Okay, so what we have here now, you've been watching me work, is we've taken care of most of the real deep stuff, as deep as I can go without removing the chrome. So this, this particular wheel uh, is 800 grit, so it's really, really fine. Now we're going to go on to the buffing wheel, and we're just going to clean it up real quick on the buffing wheel, and that ought to make this look pretty good.
it's hard to tell probably on camera, but that is a lot better. Now we have to wash all that compound off, so it's going to look a little funny. Uh, but most of the deep scratches are gone, and we haven't really brushed the chrome off, which is nice. Now, the next piece we're going to do real quick is this aluminum piece. There's some nice gouges in here. Uh, we're going to remove those. And this is a real tedious process. If you want to check out my video on polishing aluminum, I'm going to recommend that you do that. Um, because because that's what I'm going to do with this. So that's going to be tedious, and that's going to take me another 20 or 30 minutes that you guys are not going to want to watch. Uh, so check out that other video. I'll put a card right here for that. Well, I have washed everything, and it's now the next day, and I've got a fresh cup of coffee here. Um, and I'm really disappointed with the way this looks. I just wish I had another sticker to put on because this just tears my heart, the condition that this is in, especially with this. And if this was a current production model, I would replace that sticker. But that's kind of the problem when we restore vintage things. So this sticker, not so good. Um, though. Something I, I am proud of is just how polished this came out. That came out fabulous. Now, on the bottom side, we've washed everything in the nozzle. And it's hard to believe, but these carbon stains are permanent. They're not coming out. Uh, so this is scrubbed, and it smells nice and fresh. I have also taken the care to wash out all the accessories. One thing I like to do with the dusting brush is I like to take uh, Enzyme Cleaner and just soak the dusting brush with that. It gets any nasty smells the dusting brush may have had out. So this has been thoroughly... Again, I hand washed everything on this. Uh, there wasn't really enough to put in the dishwasher, so I just hand washed everything. So this will just go in there. And we're gonna, we're gonna give that a little help from our handy little tool here called a flathead screwdriver. So people are always asking me how to get off paint marks in the comment section and that is something that is behind the paywall. You can go ahead and check out our Patreon and that's behind the paywall so happy to tell you but that's that's something we're going to use to try and raise money for a 4K camera and possibly a particle counter. Now this, this just came out nice and clean, looks brand new. I don't know if the camera is really capturing how nice and clean that came out. Um, same with this, this really cleaned up well. This really looked kind of bad before, kind of foggy, so that washed up nicely. Um, I just could not get that thing out of there. Whatever I had sucked up back in the day, it's in there. Um, and since this isn't the original piece, I'm not exactly bothered by it, but it is kind of troublesome. Um, the wheels, of course, we have some permanent marks there, but they're cleaned up. I've also washed the bag. It's nice and fresh. It smells good. So we're going to go ahead and put this stuff together here in a bit. But before we do that, I also washed the inside of this, so that's nice and clean. Uh, but I... The lid was dirty. The lid was just still dirty after I scrubbed it. Uh, so I wanted to wash this more thoroughly and so I pulled the lid off. Now, if you haven't pulled one of these lids off, I don't like doing them. Um, the same reason I don't like replacing the trigger guard on an AR platform rifle uh, is because you're pounding steel into aluminum that's very thin, though this happens to be much thicker than the rifle that I'm talking about. Uh, you guys probably aren't too interested in that stuff, but among other things I do. So I'm just going to scrub the edges real quick with the toothbrush. Get it nice and clean where I normally would not be able to clean it. And it's about 20 degrees today, so it's kind of cold in the shop. I've got the space heater on that might be making some extra noise. Uh, but just to let you know if you hear that background noise. Now, there's the pen. So there is our pen. You can see that there are marks on this pin. The problem with that is those marks 
can bust something like that up. So my solution with that is using, I'm going to use some petrol oil. Now normally I use nothing but synthetic oil, but I'm going to use some petrol tapping oil. Thread cutting oil, doesn't really matter. And the reason I'm going to use the petrol oil is, let's see if we can get some in there, there we go, is this stuff will dry up and wipe off real easy. I'm also going to support what I'm doing on a piece of wood here so hopefully I don't do anything too bad to this poor old beast. Paint's just not in the, as good a condition as I remember it being in and you can see that here and it, it really saddens me. The way this is painted it's a very special technique. I don't have any way of doing that unfortunately. Um, so, just, we're actually going to have to use the corner of this. And if I sound a bit congested, it's because I am. I have definitely uh, overcoming some sort of sinus cold thing. Alright, we're just going to tap that in. Now it's stopped. I know I need to align something, so I'm going to set up, check the alignment, now I've got it aligned. Stop, check the alignment as we go through each layer. Which is excellent. Alignment looks like it's going to come out just fine. It's going to settle itself. And again, I'm not using a big hammer. I don't want to use too much force on it. So we're mostly through. There's actually a part that's sticking through now. And you can feel it there. There we go. So now we can give it a couple of nice taps right there. And if you're not familiar with uh, this kind of punch, Again, going back to uh, gunsmithing is it's a roll punch. So the tip's rounded, it's nice, it's not going to hurt the paint. When it goes in, it's tapered perfectly. Um, in fact, it's tape, I punched that in just a little bit too far on this side, so we're just going to give it just a little tap so it's centered. Perfect. Um, and because that's still going into aluminum, that's what holds it in there with that burr. So we're not too concerned about that. So let's open her up. She smells really nice and fresh now. I'm gonna put that in. I, this is the first cyclonic vacuum. Well, it's the second. I guess the Filter Queen was the first. This was the second because Filter Queen was 1927. This was 1930 something uh, originally when they came out with this. It's just a brilliant design, and it's essentially. Uh, I always like to joke with people my central bag is a giant, even though the motor's on the bottom, is a giant TriStar bag. Uh, that really is. Now you can see on these original TriStar bags, I'm going to point this out, how this isn't completely circular. And that's because this is a real soft metal this is made out of. They used a hardened 
galvanized steel on the replacements, I would highly recommend getting one of those if you're going to use a daily or if it's not for an antique rebuild like this. So we're just going to put that. And now, that shuts. Perfect. So one other thing we're going to do is we're going to put the filter in. And that's been done. We have the two carbon pieces. You can see we have a filter there. And this is not a HEPA filter. I've got, got some video where I put one of these on a Patriot. It's not quite HEPA rated. It's better than nothing, but it's, it's not... It would be acceptable for asthma, but not allergies. Get together while I warm myself up. Did you bring in my box? Yes. I want to see this. Let me see this guy in your mind. You want to do an unboxing video? No, not for this. There's too much. There's way too much content on this. Oh. What the fuck are these? It's a dusting brush. Oh, so all the old accessories are like that. Why are they soft? Why is that one soft? Because it's rubber. It's made out of different material. Just like there's... What the fuck is this? Uh, this is a wonderful work machine. Ooh, that's light. It's light, yeah. Not a dishwasher safe. Yeah, it says that. That's interesting. So what the is grind it? is uneven. Yes, it is uneven. That's weird. So the, this side... Uh, it's all hand grind. Well, it's really yeah. uneven though. So see the, the grind mark there? Yeah. See how large it is right there? Yeah, it's 12 and 9. Oh. They're known for that. So uh, That's a no-no in my knives, but... Kitchen knife what, might be different. That would make a sharp edge. That would make a sharp edge. That's a nice knife. Can I feel? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's a. I like the sticker, not dishwasher safe. It's not as pretty as I thought, though. It's really big. It's really long in the back. I'm gonna go up and try it. What are you gonna cut with that? Carrots. Come with me, baby. Sure. Let's go. Here, bring this up. I thought you were done with it. I've got my coffee chair. Baby, don't just... Can you put it in? I was trying to. I, I, when, I moved, when I moved it, was it like this? When I when I picked it up, I moved it. <laughs> I think I might like the brick wood better. How it feels in my hand. Uh, tapping this in and all that. We're gonna give it a quick wipe down. Um, give it much love. Now, if anybody knows of a good way of restoring this paint, um, or what you've done, other than a quick like a spray paint from Walmart job, like this is an actual crackle paint job. I would love to know, like if there was an, a good way of fixing this or a cost effective way of redoing this paint job. Uh, because I just am a sucker for this crackle paint. I just love that. I think it's really cool, really vintage. Um, so we're gonna throw some polish on the outside of this, just for now. And I, again, I appreciate everybody for bearing with these longer repair videos. When we rebuilt these old vacuums, they just need a lot more love than just, you know, a Hoover Tempo on the bench. Or something easy like a, an Oric. Alright, I'm going to set that aside. Next, we're going to deal with the power head. Let's move my little 2x4 out of the way. Um, the power head has a lot of needs a lot of love as well. The first thing I'm going to do is put the bumper back in place now that it's dry. 
So I took the thing, just set it down in the sink like this, and washed it at an angle so nothing got on the motor. I do want to talk about lubrication because you, uh, you do have to lubricate these. Uh, there are no sleeve bearings, and I had to lubricate that as soon as I pulled it out of the sink and blow this out to make sure this was dry and there's no water in there. So that's a lubrication point. I'll talk a little bit about the brush roller lubrication point, which is simply right there. Um, and again, another lubrication point right there. So that's where you want to lube. You don't want to make sure you get, don't have any lube on this pulley. So that's as cleaned up as that's going to be, you know, for day-to-day -day use. I might wipe that down with a little bit of 409. You can use Windex. Just get the water marks off this. So we're going to go, we're going to zoom you guys in to the action, and we're going to start uh, doing this for you. So the first thing we're going to do is put this back in, and when I do this, first I need this. Got my trusty Hitachi. Um, so there's a couple things when you put this back in. Again, I'm just going to use a little bit of tri-flow here. This is nice because it doesn't mark up the carpet if you get a drop or two extra. Uh, so we're going to put this just on here. This is just going to keep the wheels from squeaking as much. There seems to be I don't know what material these are, but there's some sort of early low friction polymer. And then it's hard to believe that I washed this, but this is actually much cleaner than it was. And you can see the little detents that's just going to go in there. And I'm just going to move it to one side so I can put that on. And again, these are just these fall off easy, so don't be shocked when these fall off a million times on you, especially once you have oil on them. So the first thing we're going to do, like I said, I don't like to take these screws all the way out. Uh, I don't see it necessary. So we're just going to put this on, realign this, I'm going to put this in there like so. So sometimes these need to be reformed, bent back into place, uh, but not on this one. So again, you can see that newer hose is going to be real stiff. You want to line up the channel and pop that on there like that. There was a time when I had full stock of these and now it's probably a discontinued part. If you wonder where I keep going, uh, it's because I use tools for other things sometimes in my shop. And I usually put them back, but <laughs> today I didn't. Uh, so, you see me doing that a little bit more than I usually do. So, we're going to put these guys back. I really would feel more comfortable doing all these by hand at the age of this. So, bear with me. So normally I would take a stone clean up the motor shaft. That's already been done many, many years ago. And there's a belt's never been actually melted off this. Now here is a great pro tip. The Rainbow brand belts. I always use for power head belts unless it is a Douglas style power head, i.e. a filter queen, and Eureka compact tri-stars and rainbows. The rainbow brand belts are much better. The rubber lasts longer and it's a lot more pliable. So just a little tip for you there. So now we're going to put this more the way I'm used to working on it. And we're going to put this guy in there. I'm just test fitting it, making sure nothing's rubbing. Um, I really feel like there was a washer missing on the end of this right here. There was no washer under there. And I know a lot of these were made just kind of funny. 
So you just walk that on there. We'll walk it on a little bit more in the center. Yeah, I'm just making sure nothing's gonna rub, nothing's gonna burn off. And it looks, even though it's a little bit more to the side than I want, everything looks great. So next, we have this panel, and you can get new foam and put this on, but where would all the fun be if we did that? Or you can get some Spray 77 and re here. So we're just going to spray some spray glue. And reattach that. So and this is pliable for like the first 24 hours or whatever. It dries like in five minutes, but then it sets. But excellent if you want to reattach a sticker. So that's that. Um, that's really all there is to this. At this point, I'm just gonna check the torque real quick on the motor. Make sure everything. Just settle up, nothing's loose. Check the torque there. Right. Really, really happy with all that. So you know, look at those plates and you're gonna say it's not shiny. I thought you polished that. Well I did. We need to clean it now. And part of the cleaning process with this is wiping down all the polishing compound that gets left on here. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to put that out of frame. So you'll see that that is now becoming much more shiny as that compound just comes off and some of that's metal. And you can see the inspections at 79 on there, that's kind of cool. So I'm guessing that's the date of this. Uh, no, there's no date wheels in there. I got real excited when I saw the mold mark. I'm sure somebody can comment below the exact date of this machine. Um, I'll probably do some research. Generally the vintage section of the va vacuum land is a good place to start for this sort of thing. These machines are loved enough by collectors, there'll be fairly accurate data on there. Uh, I'd say the new section I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust, but the, the vintage section seems to be pretty good. Alright. Just rub that down on the edge. Sure, I get all the polishing compound off here as I don't want any of that on my carpet. And you can see that now it's really shiny. There's still some marks, but again, I used 800 grit on a grinder and then the polishing wheel, so this will glide really, really, really smooth over the carpet. And with this high pile carpet, I'm going to press this down. You can see that that is going to really aid things along. And it's little details like that when you're uh, fixing a vacuum, especially like something easy like an Auric or a Kirby, you want to just check the base plate. You want to make sure nothing is is going to catch. Because believe it or not, the customer might notice that. Hmm, I don't like where that's that guy's hanging out. That's going to get a little bit of spray adhesive here on the edge. And again, I washed everything, so that sometimes can cause a little damage. So again, let's just put a little bit of spray adhesive, move it back into its place, wipe off the excess. So I, if this was just a basic tune-up on a customer's machine, and this wasn't my machine or another collector's, I wouldn't go through this effort, but anytime something's personal or anytime a collector sends me something, I am more than happy to go the extra effort. And if anybody has one of those labels on this, I would greatly appreciate that. And you'll notice the screws on this thing were mismatched and that's the way it came to me.
Well, like I said, that looks wrong, but that's how how they were. Uh, so we are gonna put this bumper back, like I said, in its place, which should be a little bit more tucked up in the front, at least. So we're gonna clean all these marks off. Actually, first we're gonna test it, make sure the motor's sounding happy. And what's cool about this is the test rig is the vacuum itself. You can just plug that in. So I'm just gonna hold it. Of course, plugging power in would be good. Excellent. Shag or Norman Pyle. stuff on and people are always asking me what I use to remove marks and uh, as I said previously if you become a patreon supporter you can find that video where I explain basic shop supplies uh, and stuff and I'd be happy to let you in on that. And uh, if you comment below on what it is, well, that comment's already blocked, so please don't do that. Actually, it's really interesting on YouTube the the things you can do on the administrative side. You can block certain words and stuff, and not just you know shit piss cunt. There goes demonetization of my video. Uh, not just those sort of things, but you can actually block, uh, you know, specific phrases like, uh, you know, bananas if you wanted to block that. So I've got a few of those set up. One for what I'm using to clean this, but because of that paywall and I'm trying to get to 4K, so please help support us. But two, there are just some phrases that I hear, I've seen over and over again that are just not nice comments, so we have those go automatically to my spam filter for that. That one's really on there. You can see where the base plate is rubbed up against that bumper too. Really should have used some gloves. <laughs> Not gonna touch the logo, we're just gonna touch the sides where it would have hit furniture. And a lot of that laundry detergent I use actually cleans up the majority of stuff on here when I wash this. Or if you put this sort of thing in a dishwasher, which I wouldn't recommend with this logo. So that is as good as that's gonna be. So put the rubber gasket in first. I'm going to wipe the rubber gasket down with some Pledge or your choice of furniture polish or glycerin. You want to make sure you match these up. You can see that there's that notch right there where the other one does not. That allows big objects to pass through. And that will just go into place. I don't think we'll ever see any floor tool this nice again. Then this plate sometimes is deformed front to back, so you just want to make sure, uh, however it is, uh, with this, that it's on there. Usually there's one direction they like better than the other. It seems I've got the magic touch there. And I'm going to put the screws in. Reset all the brush strips. It's important that you hear a click. That click so you don't double thread the screw pitch on these. 
And do be careful because we are doing steel on aluminum with self-cutting screws, self-tapping screws. Um, And I just want to wipe down the black stuff on the edge here, which is the polishing compound that I used. Wipe it down and see how nice that is. Now sometimes these need to be taken apart and lubricated. Um, this one seems to f move just how I want it, so I'm not going to do that. So. Here's some of the stuff on the bench. So now, and you can see there's this matching sparkly handle on here. Now that we have all this, before we turn it on, I want to talk about this because you see these broken a lot. This one is intact. Is this little cord holder to hold the power cord in place. And you see on this, on the, the newer ones, the channel's on the outside, and the older ones, the channel for the power cable's all on the inside. You can see where it's bottomed out. We have these nice big wheels and two big casters up front. And I don't like the sound that those just made. So I'm going to just drop a little bit of tri-flow in those. And that will quiet things up just a bit. So let's turn her on. Let's see what kind of power she makes now that she's been gone through uh, completely. And we'll talk about that power switch again. is just in a weird place right there. So just below 40. So it's a little bit more powerful than a Kirby or something like that. Uh, about as powerful as a Mila, uh, according to our uh, working vacuum gauge. So that's amazing for the 1970s. Um, and some of these have two fans in them, some of them have one fan. I've seen people put three fan motors in them. There's actually a lot of motor options available for these. Now, mine, unfortunately, does not have the original handle. It's got this replacement hose, but it looks like somebody may have taken the right cords and put them on there. Uh, but it's not a gas pump, so it's kind of period correct. Now, I know somebody's going to drool over this, but I have a manual. This is for a slightly newer one, but you're going to get the idea. This is a 1980s manual, but you can tell that the machine is the same, and... The accessory tray is the same fashion, is different. And just to show what's going on in here, this dirt is going in, there's a cyclone going around in the bag, and then it's going in and out. And they explain why their uh, upholstery tool, which is one of my favorite upholstery tools, works so well, and they show where the filters are. And this is both in English and Spanish on here. So when I show that I have, uh, don't have the air grill, that's one accessory I don't have. You can see where uh, it would have been on the box. So that's one accessory I'm missing I didn't know I was missing. Uh, we can just see her fashionable. <laughs> that lady looks like my mother when I was little. Um, so all that's pretty basic. Nice TriStar logo on this stuff. Kind of like 007 or something with that. I don't know what the gun barrel logo is for, but that's there. All right, and they got a quick troubleshooting back there. This manual's from 1981, so it's not period correct, but it gives you an idea what a manual looks would look like for one of these. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to bring it upstairs, and we're going to vacuum with this. Well, thanks for watching our restore on the TriStar, or Compact, I should say. But, 
If you've made it this far, you of course want to see it run, so let's turn around. So let's see, suction wise, what she's getting. Maybe not the best. That's over the ball lock. Let's see what the working water is. So for 1970, that's really good. Let's use the power head. Factory. This thing is actually too tall to stand up in my workspace here. Uh, but thank you for watching. Thanks to all who donate on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. Hopefully, we'll start shooting these in 4K. And I'll show you how each accessory turned out as well. That turned out really, really well. Sparkly clean. Couldn't quite get that as clean as I wanted, but satisfactory. That came out really well. So, again, thanks for watching. And make sure to give this video a good thumbs up. stand up by itself but because uh, that detent's a little worn it tends to fall over but I have to say that is a pleasure to use.